So today we, we wanted to talk about, and it's actually a topic which is inspired by an episode we saw of Michael Beasley on the Pivot podcast. Mm -hmm. And he's an NBA player, player. And he was talking about this kind of obligation he felt of having to support his family when he joined the NBA. So our question, our conversation today is titled, is it our responsibility to look after our family? So I'm going to just start off on that point there. I'm going to start with you, Matthew, because I feel like we're going to have some fun today. So for you, like <laughs> putting that question to you, is it our responsibility to look after our family? I think we have an obligation to support, but look after that's, that's a whole different kind of meaning. You know what I mean? Where it's like, what, what when you say, where does it go to and who... If you're like a lot of people here, we have a lot of big families. So I'm speaking this purely from my experience. I don't know what you guys are like, but I, my family's quite big. Yeah. Where does it go? Where does the line end? Because the scary thing is that you might find out that people that don't know who you are and I don't know, and you don't know me, it's like, and all of a sudden, it's like you're wanting something from me. And I was like, that's great. But who are you exactly again to me? Like, just, <laughs> it sounds, and that sounds really bad, right? That sounds really bad. I think, and again, we get to a space in lives where we surround ourselves in a circle, like even when it comes to friends, work and family, for the most part, your, circle, your circles are quite small. So you have core family, core friends, core work. So you're not going to know about it too much unless it's outside of your kind of core family now, especially after the last two years we've had, it's probably mm. even shrunk even more. So it's, it's, Support, yeah. I goes by saying support, yeah. But look after is something that's it's difficult when you're even trying to do that on your own. As before, yeah. we get onto the whole things that we're talking about the cost of living nowadays, where we got to look after ourselves. Now I got to look after you. It's been made a lot more difficult, so to speak. So, and again, it goes to the point: who are you? Who who are you? Like, for if it sounds awful to say, but family that I haven't known for a long time, who we've never met, as far as I'm concerned, I might have walked by you in the street. You're a stranger to me. You're, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, I'm, I mean, it sounds horrible, but you might feel that some type of way about me too. So if I'm going to do it for one stranger, I might as well do it for all of the strangers. So every person I see who might need something, I'm going to be like, here you go, here you go, here you go. It, I just don't believe in that. I think, you know, support support by all means but look and what do you mean by look what do I look after as well what do we mean by look after I think, I think well. it's like you being obligated like every like every single person I don't know if it's like the black community just mm. in general mm. but I feel like we're always like giving back we're always like um when we get money it's we go home whether it's Africa or the Caribbean you mm. go home and you help out who you left behind type of thing, especially mm. if you're not originally from that country that you're in and you're mm. making that type of money. But then I, I just don't feel like, why is it my responsibility? Sorry. Why is it my responsibility to be doing that? Do you get what I mean? Like mm. I need to be living my life type of thing. Mm. Um, I can't support everyone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it is, a, it's a lot. I think it's a lot. I've, I don't agree with it, to be honest. I don't feel like I'm obligated to be given when I've got kids or mm. I've got someone else in my household that I need to support. Now I've got to support everyone else back home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit much. I think that's the thing. And also like where, what do people view as support? Mm. Someone might think support is, okay, I'll send you like a little check every now and again. Someone might say, you got to send, you know, your cousin to school. You got to send, yeah. you know, you, you got to, you know, to get us some like, I need shopping money this weekend. Like what, is the definition of support if it's a small thing like saying you know what like right now we're a bit struggling can you help us out with this and other? that's that's different but if it's like a continuous thing like every week every month you need to be paying x amount of money into into our pockets to help us out that's when i'm a bit like mm, is that support now or, mm. or am i now do i work for you am i your employee yeah um, i guess for you craig what would you like what's your take on this on this sort of kind of position so far it's, it's always good to help people where there comes there comes a point when they have a cut off point, mm. so it's like, you know, everyone like I as I know, as Matthew said that about you love to help people in your community and help your fam, help your friends here and there, but it comes to a stage here when you have to say to them, you know what, I've done as much as I can. You have to kind of create something for yourself. So it's like, 
it, obviously if you have the money you could open a business and you say no what i want you to help me run this business and you get paid and you employ people and do something like that give them an opportunity give them something in there and they can work off that and make something else for themselves from that then that could work instead of them leeching off they can work and earn something for themselves and they can in the end they can either build save enough money and they can have their own business and they can move forward and they or you can build together build mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I, f- I think that's a that's a good point. Actually, I'm I'm gonna throw this question to you, Matthew, because like I remember reading about this a few months ago, and it's what I, I know. Like one of the things that we're always encouraged to do is that whilst you're living at home, support your parents as much as you can. Like you know, do what you can to help them out. Right. But I remember hearing the story of this young guy who's in university. He's got no money left. Like student loan came straight to mum. Grant came straight to mum. He's working his job. His paycheck comes straight to mom. Like he's got nothing for himself at all. So I want to ask you like, Matthew, when you hear about that, like what what do you think? And do you feel like that is an, an example of it going way too far? Absolutely. That's, and that again, is like, and that's his, and that's his, his, his mom. Yeah. That's his mom doing it. I mean, again, we can all agree here that if you're living under their roof, then not all of the money will go or support will go to them, but some of it. I mean, that's how it was for me. I don't know how it was for you guys. And that's fair enough because at the end of the day, you're living there, but it is their house. But when you've left that roof and you're starting your own kind of, your own kind of dynasty and legacy, whatever you're going to do, like what they got to show for it, if you're taking all of his money and get best still, what are you doing with that money? Is And, you know, even if it was going towards something good, why is he, why are you taking all of it? Why has it got to be him? Like, your whole thing is to kind of see them and go off and do what they're meant to be doing. Like, are you trying to catch up on lost time? Are you being selfish with it? I mean, the fact that, I mean, for anyone who doesn't go to uni, was it a grant and is what the maintenance? Everything. That is, we're talking thousands a month. Thousands, uh, upwards of of like 1,500 at at the the very least. What are you doing with that? That's a wage. That's essentially a wage. And I mean, and it just kind of creates a resentment, and it's bad enough that it's your own mum. Because at one point, what have you got? If he if if he's got no money, where is he going to go after university's done? He's he's gonna have to come back. He's got no money. He and, can't he and, can't go yeah. off and start anew. Yeah, you've taken all his money, so now he's gonna come back, and to be like, well, where's my money? You've taken it all. Wait, so is That's he giving like back. the full thing then? He, so he's got no money. Like everything goes to mum. But she doesn't get, she doesn't get like, you know, like some parents, if you still live at home, Mm. you'll give like, I don't know, like 200 pound rent if you live in a home or something. And then you pay for your own food, Mm. whatever it is, or you give her money for food. So it's nothing like that. It's just as soon as my bursary comes, I give it straight to you. He's got to give it. And and if he chooses not to, it's a big issue. Like if he tries to ask for like, say, listen, this month I want to give a smaller percentage. No, you don't love me. You, you know, I I, oh. I I sacrifice so much for you. I would have moved out. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't have been me. Moved out and stayed out. I like. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not staying. I, I wouldn't dream doing that to someone. No, that's too much. No, I don't even have children. I never do. I wouldn't even do that to my worst, like my worst enemy. Yeah, it's just that's like, weird. It's just no, wrong. That like, see him out on. But how am I going to survive? Like that's what I'm thinking. Like, how am I going to survive throughout the week and the month? Like, yeah, you've got my whole set of money. That's the thing. That, and I, I remember when I read it, I thought this this is madness. Like, I mean, there's one thing to to support the family and give up, you know, up to you pay. Whether you call it rent or support, however you want to phrase it, you're giving to help out, right? Yeah, yeah. To say every penny that comes into my man's pocket, Mumsy's getting ninety percent, ninety five percent, and he's left with the scraps and he's got to live off the scraps. And if he tries to say, okay, this month I can't give as much, I want to give less. Yeah. Oh, you don't love me. Guilt, you right? don't care. Mm. You know, that's just madness. I couldn't believe it. I think it. it's bad like living at home and your mum's like guilt tripping you for mm. things. It's just like, I understand. And the worst thing for me is like when mums do the whole, I think most mums do this, yeah. No disrespect mums. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a mum. But I think they feel like, well, I brought you into this world. You owe me. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. I pay for all your meals. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like school dinners was a lot. Like, you know the ones there? So no, I don't. I don't know. They guilt trip you with little things like, oh, I pay the electric. I pay this. I pay that. You need to be giving me the whole check. Like, no, no, I wouldn't live at home. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. I just I just don't get it, man. And I, I was just shocked to, to see that. And then obviously you think of like Michael Beasley's 
as like an additional example to that. Like yeah. This guy's a multi, multi-millionaire. He's in the NBA, mm-hmm. comfy, and yet he feels an, like he has to pay out every month. I'm going to flip, flip this to you, Craig. Like if you mm-hmm. were in a similar situation, you're wearing a Lakers shirt today. <laughs> They're not really winning right now, but you're wearing a Lakers <laughs> shirt anyway. Um, like you, if you were in a situation where you're on, let's put it in football terminology, you're on like 70 grand a week. I'm fee. That's a lot of money, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. seven grand a week, right? <laughs> and you got a phone call from a long lost cousin. He ain't spoken to since you were a chap. They see you on the TV. They're like, ah, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. That's my cousin Craig. Let me call him up. Oh, <laughs> hey, cousin Craig. You know, I'm going through a rough time. Like, can you look? Can you like? Can you just send me like a hundred thousand pounds? Uh-uh. Okay. I just got, <laughs> yeah, I they, they get a real figure, like 100, okay. 100 pounds you sent it my way. Like, what, what would be your response? I know my response. <laughs> so do I. My, my phone wouldn't even pick up, but like, what would be your response to that situation? <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be, first I'd be shocked. Like, I've told this person for a long time. I'm not, I'd, I'd be like, I don't remember you kind of thing. And the second, I'd be like, I'd ask the question, like, what do you need it for? Mm. That'd, be my, that'd be my first question. Like, what do you need the money for? Mm-mm. And the next question I ask is like, if I give you this money, will you, will you bother me again? And then after that, if he gives me the wrong response. Okay, well, okay, <laughs> let, 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 let's let's say, okay, what do we need the money for? All right, I, you know, auntie's not well, you know, we've got to pay for medical treatment, um, we'll, uh, you know, so we've just got to, you know, get her, get, get her some good doctors, got to maybe take her to the US to kind of have the best treatment. What would you say then? Wait. That, 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 it's a family member and she's sick obviously you're, if you have the money you want to help them but then you, then again you think to yourself am I the only family member there yeah mm. if there's other family members that could help us if all the family are close all the family can chip in I'll, I don't mind chipping and give a percentage a mm. little cut but I'm not going to give you a whole hundred thousand I'm not that stupid mm. I'll, I'll say you know what I'll give you what I can what I think for that will be enough that I want to give mm. not what you're expecting me to give what I can afford, what I feel is the right to give, I'll give you that. If you need the rest, I'll ask your other family members. Mm. Okay, fair enough. That, that's, that's been kind because at the end of the day, I could say, no, I'm not giving you nothing. I'm giving you something. It's like, better than nothing. It's mm. better like, than it's, me. It's, it's like beggars in the street. If, if you, if you see a beggar in the street <laughs> and they beg you for money and you give them money, you give them food and they'll be funny with you after, I don't want money, I want food. They're like, well, I gave you something. Be satisfied. Yeah. Simple thing. I don't have to give it to you. I don't you. have to give from the kindness of my heart, I'm giving it to you. So mm. take what I'm giving it to you or leave it. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Very methodical way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Matthew, let, let me flip that same question to you. I'm going to adjust the amounts though. Right. 100,000 is a bit steep. I feel like we all <laughs> might have to, right now, got a holiday. you know, <laughs> might have to yeah. like, be sure that much. Let's say, again, same scenario, a cousin you haven't spoken to in a little while, they've asked you for a thousand pounds. They know be good for it because mm-hmm. they happened to be on social media they saw someone did an instagram story with you in it celebrating the news that you got a pay rise got a new job you've gone from earning say you know thirty thousand up to fifty thousand now so they know you're good for a grand how would you approach that my aggressive reaction would be to first and foremost from someone that i haven't met in a long long time and things have changed over time my first reaction is to hang up but <laughs> But, 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 you know, yeah. the more sensible person than me says, let me see what they have to say. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. Mm. So I'll go Darth Vader on this and be like, leave it to me. I want to see if it's for myself. So if I'm going to be given something, I want to see where it's going. So if you're saying she's ill, and I like to think that, you know, the kind of person in me thinks that you would never fake something like that. You know, you never do like, you know, fake an illness. So I'll fly over with my own money and find out what is going on and I'll get the skinny. And from there and then <laughs> is the decision Shit. in my mind of how far this is willing to go. Got it. Yes. So if you start at the moment, like certain things start coming out, especially if you start saying my account is this and that, I'm calling it right there. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. The only person I am dealing with, the only person who's getting the money is the person that's sick. Mm. The rest of you aren't getting a dime. Okay. Just, to, just to show, yes, I do care, but it's not in the way that you want me to. Mm. So it's like, you know, before any kind of transaction is ever going to happen, we've got about 18 years of conversation to catch up on. 
So if you right. want the money, you can earn it. And I'm going to flip the same mm. question to you, Zion. What would be your response? It's probably the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I would do that because I'd want to see proof. Like, is it going to the person? Because it's the same like when you give to charities, where's it going? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, even if you, you probably know the charity, but I feel like, hey, but why do you lot still need it? after a certain amount of time, like years and years later, mm. um, it could also be a thing of like where the person who's sick, what if the, what, what if the person that has actually said to them, oh, okay, they're sick, but they're lying about it. Ooh. Yes. And then you're thinking, imagine you fly over, like you said, you fly over and then nothing's happened. They're like, where's this, where's this sick auntie? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I just needed it for this. It will turn into something else. Like my car broke down. Okay, so show me the car. Yeah, the car's the car? chill. You've got <laughs> a nice little Mercedes. You know what I mean? It's just really nice. And then, no, something's going on there. I'm going home. Yes. I ain't got time. But then I would be annoyed because I hate wasting my time. So mm. I'll be like, you know what? You you need to give my money back for my flight. Mm. This is this is too much. I just flew all the way here. Mm. You used to tell me that it's, my auntie's not really sick. Your auntie. It's not really sick. Your, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your auntie is not really sick, okay? <laughs> we are distant cousins, okay? Like, yeah. Nah, I don't know. I couldn't do it. I just, mm. I don't think I'd believe it because um, I have a lot of money. Mm. So you're going to know, okay, they'll probably just give it out anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's nothing. A pound is nothing to you no. in their mind. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But in your mind, it's like, okay, this could be for my kids. This could be for, you don't know my situation. Yeah. You might think I've got a lot of money. Cause you saw it at first. But what if I don't? Hmm. Yeah, you know, that extra bit of grocery that you might that extra pound might go further on groceries and things like that. Exactly. All, all that bill, just tipping that bill, just over. Especially edge, just now in inflation. Bit. Especially now, where everything costs. We can't. We can't afford anything <laughs> exactly. nowadays. So yeah, that's a good point. You know, into perspective. I, I think that's important. I, I think I say to anyone that like, listening, especially if you feel pressure to give and support family do your mm. due diligence like make sure you know where it's if you do one of two things if you do your due diligence and make sure you find out exactly where and how that money is being used or you decide from the minute you send it it's no longer my business pick one but you can't be angry <laughs> after you sent it <laughs> yeah and you found yeah. out that like uh you know you sent it back home you know someone said oh you know i'm not feeling well mm -hmm. like auntie's unwell i need the money then you flip on the gram and all of a sudden you see them in the club they're like look at <laughs> us we are rich in the club they're, they're, they're flossing and you're like oh. i was like oh so that's my drinks <laughs> that's my limo it is. That's, that's, the, that's my stun right there that's, that's my, my bottle that's yeah. my steak vip section yeah, yeah. that's mine <laughs> So, so I think that's that's the key thing. You gotta choose one. You can't be upset at the giving if you haven't done due diligence. And if you have done due diligence and you still give, that's between you, them, and God. That's yeah. it. Don't cry over the money. Definitely, I agree. But I guess I guess the second part to this argument, which is really, really interesting, because you know, I think we can all safely say that mm. when it comes down to family, I think we do feel a sense of a sense of responsibility to look after them, to help and support oh, yeah. them as much as we can, right? Yeah. But the question is, who is family though? Is at what point does the line get drawn? Yeah. I'm gonna start with you, Craig. Where does the line get drawn in the sand? I feel like I'm putting you on the spot today. <laughs> no, no, no. I got this. I got this. You sure? Um, I feel it draws the ones who helped you the most and were there for you the most. That's where the line draws. So for me, ah, so for me, okay. it has to be the ones who, who like been through the hard times with me and the struggles and whatever. And whenever I need them, they're there for me. They're solid. So I'll say mom, brother, sister. Yeah, and then the rest, yeah, mom, brother, sister, uh -huh. and then maybe grandmother or grandfather in that category. Aunties and uncles, hmm. Depends what have you done for me. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> what if you have an auntie or uncle that says, well, you know, when you were a baby and your parents had to go to work, I looked after you every day continuously. I changed uh -huh. your nappy. I fed you. I put you to sleep. I hold you. Where's, well, my, where's my change, Craig? Well, well, I'll, I'll say to them, I'll ask my mom that question. Did, did that really happen? And she said, no, then, 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 then it's a no, isn't it? <laughs> okay. No. And if they said yes? I'll have to think about that. I think deeply about it. I said, you know what? Depends if they've been genuine or not, as you said before, if they've been genuine mm. or not. So everyone, everyone's an opportunist in life, and everybody wants the opportunity. So that's the opportunity they'll they'll go and grab it. So you have to you have to kind of cut out the opportunities very quickly, and that always happen when you have money. Yeah. When you're broke, 
Nobody talks nobody to cares you. About yeah. you. Nobody calls you to check in on you nice. to see yeah. if you're okay or anything. As soon as you're doing well for yourself, everyone comes out the woodwork. Oh, yeah. Oh, Craig's doing yeah. well. Oh, Sam's doing well. <laughs> Claire's doing well. Oh, Matthew's doing well. Let me, let me go holler at them now, see yeah, if I can jump on. Yeah, yeah. I call them people leeches. Yeah. Their leeches have to be, you know, cut off, mate. Cut off quickly. So don't, you have to be very careful. Like, you just have to be careful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm going to put that question to you, Zion. What, where, where does the line get drawn on family? Because we all, we all have them cousins, cousins, extended cousins. I'm glad my cousins don't even live in this country. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that my Caribbean side is that everyone's over there. Like they're all scattered and I'm happy. Okay. But I know because like it happens to my other friends and stuff where they'd be like, yeah, as soon as you, you hit something nice or whatever, they're like, oh, you know, I saw you yesterday on TV or I saw you yesterday on Instagram. And, uh, you know what I mean? That's when they're just like, they pounce on you. So I yeah. get it. When you get money, family members and friends act completely different. And, or just, it, even even if it's not money, it's some type of like, you mm. know, I don't know how I would, would be, it would have, I'd, because I'm picky now, I'd probably be picky with my money and stuff and who I pick. So it's really hard because you don't want, you're always going to get some backlash from it anyway, you know? It could be like your cousin, your your actual first cousin. And they could be like, well, I've known you for ages. Like we talk on a regular, but it's like, yeah, but I don't want to give you that money. You know uh, what I mean? It's, it's mine. Yeah. And like, we're not to that extent of like, okay, I have to, do you know what I mean? My daughter, yes. Um, My mom, yes. My sister, probably that's it. I think I'm not going to lie. Like that's it for me. I like that. You know, so that, that, that's a nice small group of people that you can yeah. reliably trust. No riffraff, no others, yeah. and no extension of people who are trying to graft themselves back in. Yeah. Like, stay out. But I'm also got Matthew. Right. So I have time to think <laughs> about this a little bit longer. So originally I said three, but up to I'm now up to to at least I've gone back to my original five. They go back to what Craig was saying and being mm-hmm. like when times have been hard, not necessarily to do with money, let's say there's a, a death in a family or something's going on or someone needs some help. It like what people, who, where were your priorities where, and as a family where you did things like that. So that's what I'm kind of basing it off where people would literally would drop things. We wouldn't expect them to drop things, but they would. Mm. And they'll be there. They'll come around your house. They'll bring you food, whatever it is they needed. Mm. You were there. There was no kind of obligation. They did it because, you know, they want, they did it because out of the kindness of their heart, they're doing that. They want, that they want, and they wanted to. So in that case, and if we're going into my family history of recent, which I'm not going to go into, it's changed a lot over the last, say, 10 to 15 years. Yeah, so is mine, yeah. So I'm going to say my dad, definitely him. My brother, um, especially had his now, he recently had a little baby girl as well. It'd be great to help them out. Mm. Um, my, my partner and my two sisters, I think, would be the ones because they can kind of like a spider and spread that kind of share, that kind of thing with the people that they kind of have mm-hmm. without necessarily coming to ask me for, for the kind of money. So that made me my original more revised plan because those are the kind of people that i know i can trust or or let's say unfortunately someone who's, whose mouth's a bit too big revealed everything that <laughs> happened okay so everyone now knows right but this is how we're going to play it mm-hmm. seeing as it is my money your <laughs> so so it's not more money more problems it's your it's, it's my money your problem my money, your problem. So I'm using that. So <laughs> the rule of one, you get one thing. <laughs> Let's say you got some kind of bill or something that you need paying. I will decide what I pay, not you, me. So if you got an overdue car bill, done. You want to help a bit with a mortgage, done. A bill, done. Groceries, done. <laughs> The moment I hear the word Balenciaga or BBL, <laughs> we have an issue. Yeah, we're finished. We're done. So it's your problem, but I decide, seeing it is, it is my money. So like if your car me. needs yeah. a tire, it's getting a cheap tire, but you're getting a new tire. My decision as a warning, as a thing to show you that's my deed done. Right there and then. But what if they say that that's out of order? 
So they'll be like, so you can, you know, some people love to compare as well. Oh, so you gave this one this money, and then mm. and then you're out here giving me some bootleg tire. Banger, fam. Like, what is this, fam? They'll be like, do you know what I mean? They'll be like, I can What's be very this? private and reclusive when I want to. So they don't know. Yeah, gonna, they're not gonna do any. They not, they're not gonna share their problems. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I said, it's my decision. Especially depending on how much it's going to be. Yeah, but what if so, they they go back like you see like say. Like your your cousin or like say your sister, they know they obviously they, they they know each other, so they'll be like, oh yeah. So he, what did he get you? Oh, he he gave me money for a bootleg tire. And what did you get? I got a house. I got two words for them: <laughs> see ya and buy. <laughs> Savage. I can buy my. I, I got. I can buy my own family. Said, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> Take what you get. You know what I mean? See you buy. Remember it. <laughs> my decision, not yours. If I'm yeah. gonna be, you know, go get, you know. But you know how people like to make you feel bad. Like you, you, you decide what you want to give, and mm-hmm. then automatically it's like, well, that's not fair, and da da da. It's just like, come on, man. It's my money. Be grateful. Yes, you know what I, mean? I don't. I don't have to. Exactly. I don't have to, but I'm doing it out of it, or I'm doing this out of the kindness. I'm willing to help you. Yeah. Where you know where I didn't have the money, and the worst thing is, is that sometimes when you have even less money than you did at that point, mm. you'd still want some way like. To go out and help them. Like my dream would be to pay off the mortgage on my dad's house. That's mm. my absolute, yeah, that's one really of my nice. dreams. Yeah. One of the first things I have to do was to do that. Just pay it off and that be done and be happy. When we, I think I'm speaking for me. I don't know what it's like for you guys. Yeah. That's the one thing we like to do as far as family goes, just to pay off that kind of house thing. That would be mm. the dream. Mm. So it shows in a way that, you know, it goes back to the original question of, you know, is there an obligation to look after and sort of thing. As much as we might not think we have to, Sometimes maybe even we want to. Yeah, it's enough. Definitely yeah, want to. If you're re- enough, if you're yeah. raised Ryan, that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's their legacy. And you want to kind of show that you appreciate what they've done, putting all that time and money and energy into a, a property for how many other years. Yeah. And to look off and to look after it or, you know, to respect their wish and what they want to do. So if they want to keep it on fine, or if they want to sell it, once it's paid off fine as well. Yeah. Mm. So we th- we do want to, even if we I think we want to. You know, I think it's I with know. immediates. It's probably with immediate family, like the ones yeah. that are right near you. Mm. Whereas like distant and that, like, it, yeah, it could be your cousin, but they don't live in the country. We don't have a bond like yeah, that. Do you know what I'm saying? You, so yeah. I can understand that on that side of like, I'm not obligated to you. My mum, yeah. My sister, yeah. But everyone else, nah. Forget it's it. Ask, and it's asking for money as well. I don't know about you. I, I hate asking for money. Oh uh, Yeah. I'm, I hate, I'm like that. I can't even ask no. for a, a five. I have to be really, really, tenor. really bad to, in order it. to do it. Yeah. I feel I feel and like you, um is it, it pride? It, is it like a pride thing? I just partly, but it's just mm. it's I just feel horrible. Yeah. I feel awful I feel like doing a bum, it. I, I, I feel like a bum when I'm I feel money. awful doing it like I'm failed. I'm a <laughs> failure. Wow. Like I know I'm trying to feed myself like budget quiche, frozen quiche from the freezer. And I'm like, this it's a <laughs> it's a mission to get that. I'm like, I'm sorry, I I'm, I got Dad, I need to borrow twenty pound, mate. I ain't got no food. Yeah. I swear, I was like, oh, I, 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 I felt ooh doing it. Yeah, but, yeah. Mm. but some people find like asking for it way too much. Mm. Yeah, but if I don't have, I just do it without, man. So sort of, yeah. I'll find a way. <laughs> I'll find a way. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So yeah, man. Who would you um, who would you tell? Mm. Who would I tell? Yeah. Uh, I mean, fool. You know, I could be millionaire right now. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> Can I have some money? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, like you know, it's I, I, I you know, I, I mean, the fit the immediate, immediate family would know, like my, my, my mom and my siblings. Well, yeah. Outside of that, not many more people would know. That's I don't fair. think I would. I mean, if if family did come up to me and ask me for help, it would lead to a very interesting. I mean, I. Any of you watching, I love you guys. I love you all. But if any of you, if at any point in the near future, in the next five to, five to 10 years, I have a lot of money, respectfully, don't ask for any. I'm just not going <laughs> to give it to it. you. Don't come um, over here. I have a lot of questions about a lot of stuff and we're not going to have a conversation. So just leave me be. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I ain't going to. I don't no, blame you. I can't do it. I can't do it. Because it, it just, it'll just get, it'll just get too much really. Mm. And then it's like, when is enough enough? Because mm. some people, they'll never be satisfied with, with whatever you give them. Like you said, buy one, you get one, a, a car, wheel. <laughs> you would have bought a car. <laughs> and that expense that, but you got me this, not that. And it, it's just, it's never ending. So yeah. I think for me, I, I would just keep it to the immediate family. Mm. 
extended family, I probably would help if I felt in a way that I felt made sense. Mm. So if they asked for money, I'd want to know what the money was for. And if it was for something, like say they wanted money to buy something, I'd probably find a way to get the thing they need rather than getting the money directly. That's true. Yeah. Because you, 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 someone might say to you, oh, I need like 5,000 pounds to buy something back home. And then when you do the conversion and the exchange rate, you know- It's not that. It doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. You know, you know they've, they've changed the pound to dollars so it's higher. Then they change the dollars back in Jamaican mm-hmm. dollars, for example, or Canadian dollars, so it's even more. Right. Then you're like, hold on a minute. For my 5,000 pounds, I could have given you two and a half. Yeah, I could have given you one and it would have covered it. But they you, want that you, for you the know? casino. That's yeah. it. Yeah. The casino. <laughs> or, the par- or the party for the young guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, mean I, I don't know about that last point that Craig made. <laughs> if, 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 if that gets happened, but yeah, I think that's, that's the thing. It's just knowing how it's going to be used. And I guess for people who are facing those pressures. Because it is hard when you, you try and say no to family, just like aunties and aunties. And they're like, ah, oh, my son, my daughter. It's when oh, it's that no. phrase, oh, my yeah. son, my daughter, oh, I raised God. you. I'll be like, did you know? Okay. You changed one nappy. That's yes. it. One. One. And mm. now you've raised me. Uh-huh. And they want their, their money. So I think that that's a hard thing. Mm. But I guess, I guess like to close this episode off, this has been quite fun actually. Yeah. It's quite interesting to see how we would all deal with the realities of it i guess if we were to advise someone let's pitch it pitch it at a young person mm-hmm. they're 16 years old no they're 17 about to go to uni mm-hmm. 10 to 18 soon about to go to yeah. uni and it's their first time away from home when they've been at home they had like a little side job they kind of helped out a little bit around the house yeah they're going into uni like how would and and of course they know that they're gonna have those those pressures, those conversations about like you're away from home, I need your support. How would we advise them to kind of deal with that? I'll start with you, Zion, and work our way around. I just turn my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm in uni. I'm minding my business. Mm. Don't need to stress because I think I'm assuming uni. I've never been to uni. Mm. But I'm assuming it's stressful. Yeah, it's mm. like maybe the first year ain't because I heard a lot of madness happens on the first year. But oh, yeah, yeah. the second and the third, I think, yeah, you can't be letting people get to you, man. That's how I feel about it. Honestly. What are you, Craig? I, 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 I'll tell them to budget. Like, make sure you have enough to look after yourself. And if you can help, you can help. But you ha- but the parents should be in a way, should understand that they're st- the son's trying to get a degree to better himself. That if he if he gets his degree, mm-hmm. the whole family wins because he'll be able to get a better job. And they'll be able to help his family even more. But if you're putting pressure on when he's at uni, you know, we all went, me, you, and Matthew all went to uni. You know how stressful it is. Mm. First year's all right. It's not that stressful. When you got to second and third year, it matters a lot what degree you get. If you get two, one, or first class honors. So you need to focus on getting your, de- like getting your degree and doing like um, assignments and doing exa- exams and all that. So your focus should be on your education. And your parents should be pressuring you when you're doing education. They should mm. be encouraging you and saying, you know what? Don't worry, don't worry about anything. Just focus on your studies. We we will we'll figure it out. And I feel well, that's the best mm. way for them to progress. They're then putting stress on. Oh, I need this. I need that. You can't do that. Mm. It's not because it's, it's, uni is stressful. Honestly, uni is very stressful. No, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not very healthy. stressful, and especially if you live outside of. If you're not obviously, if you go to uni in London, it's different. But if you go to uni outside of London, you're not in London, and you're away from family. No, that's you're a in lot. halls, or you're living with. We have different people you're, you're, you're living with, sharing with. It's a different, it's, it's not like you can run home to mommy and daddy every day and, oh, can you help me with this? You're on your own. You're on your own. You're, 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 yeah. you're grown up. You're an adult now. Mm. So you have to, um, so you have to work things out yourself. Obviously, you're going to make mistakes here and there. Every uni student makes mistakes here and there. No one's going to be go through a straight, a straight perfect route. They're going to make a mistake here and there. But from that mistake, you're able to excel and get, get something out of your degree from of your, your university experience, I would say. Mm. And you, Matthew? I'm not gonna speak from a parent point of view because I'm not a parent and I have no idea what it's like to have someone who's 17 about to go off into the world and be an adult. So I'm gonna talk from the other side from experience that I know and maybe not so much for the side on money, but I will say this is that as an adult, growing into adult right, you're gonna realize that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And I think as an adult, it's a very valid lesson to learn. So. And this comes from not even from family. This could come from people around you at work or in your studies is that they will 
family are not the only ones that will guilt trip you into things that mean you are outside of what your boundaries about outside of your limits yeah and shows that they're not respecting what that boundary that you have set don't feel like you're pressured to say yes because if they turn around saying that you don't care they didn't care from the first in the first place mm -hmm. as an adult you're out there it's a very hard thing to do go out there and stand on your own two feet where you have to solve 99 percent of your own problems mm -hmm. it's unfair to have the burden of other problems from other people including that of like a family. You like to think that as a parent, you would have, and I never had this problem, you know, when I was at uni, they were like, you go off, you do your own thing, you start afresh, you start anew. I went somewhere completely different out of my comfort zone, but it it made me to the person that I am today. I like to think I can take what is thrown at me. Um, it's unfair for them to expect more from you when they're going off and being as a dog, because it creates a poor life lesson for them in the future where, they might make the same mistake with their own children where they're demanding things where they really, you really should be setting them out there to be in the adult world to, you know, to survive, to be yeah. grown ups, to know that the safety net underneath you has shrunk in a way that you'll, you'll never really understand. So, and you as adults should already know that. No offense, I'm not thinking of a parent point of view, that's something that should already, they should already know that, you know, you're out there on your own two feet. It's unfair to expect, expect that. But when they're still a child, even when you're 18, you're not grown. You are no. still a child. Yeah. You, you have, they have, you're, you're setting them up so badly to force them to say yes to things that are outside of their interests. That means that people are going to take advantage of them. You know, they're going to get them to say yes to things that are outside of their, you know, their normal character. So I would say that as one is knowing and respecting your own boundaries. Because if you don't respect it, they don't have to respect it. Yeah. And as long as you're respectful with it, as you're, you're, you're firm but fair with it, you know, an assertive point of view, I think that's a good, learn. it's a good life lesson to learn. Like not doing what you don't feel comfortable with. I think it's a good lesson. I think it's a good thing to learn. Yeah. I echo that sentiment. I think just set, set those boundaries in place. Whatever things you are not comfortable doing, don't, don't do, do. Don't do it. if you you know especially when it like student loans and, and the money at uni or those who have to work as well your money's gonna be limited so if you can budget to help then do the, what you can but don't feel like it's an it's an obligation that you have to do it because then if you're gonna like take money out of your own pocket to give back home and then you're struggling to you know I'll be honest with you. Indomie is nice, yeah. Noodles are noodles bang, mm. right? But it's not every day. Crackers yeah. are nice, but you can't be living off crackers and Indomie for three months of uni. Nope. Because the money is back home with the family. That's not, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, it's not gonna no, work. No, no. It's not healthy, man. Yeah. No. Unless the family are gonna cook you meals, mm -hmm. and you can come home, pick it up, and take it back with you. You put it in the containers in in your ice cream dish and all all sorts. You know, <laughs> by all <laughs> means, then ice cream that, dish. That, that's a fair negotiation. But if not. I wouldn't go down that route. 